Thank you for joining me today. My name is Deboche Sadekan, and I work in the Safety and Mission Assurance Organization at the NASA Glenn Research Center. On this project, I was the electrical lead. Today, I'm going to take you on our journey of the project from build to flight and touch on some of the lessons learned along the way. Starting with a brief overview, our motivation was to contribute to the advancement of the CubeSat platform as a vehicle for cost-effective technology demonstration for science and exploration missions, while leveraging Glenn Research Center's core competencies in power management and distribution, as well as shape memory alloys. This project also exposed the early career team to hands-on hardware design, as well as technical and project management practices. We had two primary objectives. The first, demonstrate the functionality of the novel shape memory alloy activated retention and release mechanism, and shape memory alloy deployable array hinges in an on-orbit environment. The second was to assess the system level capability to charge a high capacity battery, distribute 100 watts of power, and thermally control the system in a low earth orbit environment. Albus launched in December of 2018 as part of the CubeSat launch initiative Alana mission on Rocket Labs Electron. Our concept of operations calls for a four to six month duration. We used NASA Wallops Flight Facilities Ground Station for communication and conducted ground operations at NASA Glenn Research Center through an interface. On the left, we have the launch vehicle concept of operations from pre-launch to deorbit. On the right, we have ALBUS concept of operations starting at T plus two minutes is the deployment from our launch service provider and the, the spacecraft turns on. Approximately one day later, we establish communications and collect transmitting data to validate our thermal control and battery charging algorithm. Approximately one week after that, we begin our nominal operations and demonstrate the 100 watt power dis distribution technology. Here we have the overview of the schedule. The project started in 2013 based on solicitation. The proposal was submit, submitted to the 2014 call. Our system CDR was in December of 2016. Our pre-ship review was in February of 2018 and deactivation occurred in early 2019. The reason for deactivation we will get to on the following slides. Here is an overview of the CubeSat architecture, and I'll go through the various subsystems in the following slides. Here we have our hinge mechanisms on one end of the CubeSat. Then comes the radiator, which has our 100 watt distribution load attached to it. The electronics are stacked throughout the CubeSat with the release and retention mechanism next. Then on the other end, we have the radios and the antennas. Albus has two configurations, one deployed configuration with the solar arrays deployed and the stowed configuration, which is our launch configuration. Starting with the release and retention mechanism, the R&R is a two-stage shape memory alloy pin puller type mechanism. This retains the arrays during ascent and then releases in orbit on command. The first stage is a pin puller device driven by a shape memory alloy linear actuator, which was designed by Mega Motors using our Glenn Research Center's alloy. The second stage is a hook and pin design that is released by a compression spring loaded plate on the plane bearings. Once deployed, the hinge mechanism deploys each array to a desired deployment angle. Next, we have the electrical power system. The EPS consists of four PCBs, a battery, and solar panels. The auxiliary regulates and distributes power, enables the r and &R, and enables load-based environmental conditions. The charging system consists of a boost converter capable of smart max power point tracking, but by default, Albus charges with a constant current and constant voltage scheme. The discharge system is a 100 watt output bank of power resistors in parallel. The 
processor is a flight computer is the Texas Instruments MSP P430. The battery is a four series two parallel configuration, COTS gum based lithium ion cells with a nominal voltage of 14.8 volts. The solar arrays, we have four body mounted and four deployed solar arrays. The deployable solar arrays utilize the shape memory alloys for, as wires to transfer the power. All cells are ultra triple junction type solar cells with a nominal efficiency of 28.3%. Albus relies entirely on a passive thermal control system. The primary challenges were the limited external surface area radiators to reject the waste heat into the space, limited thermal mass due to the size of the spacecraft, the high power thermal transients require iterative analysis to predict hardware temperatures and ensure they are within component limits, and the lack of attitude control added additional challenges in providing adequate thermal control. The PMAD system waste heat was managed primarily by providing conductive pathways to the frame and utilizing the solar array body panels as effective radiators. Our 100 watt load was attached to an aluminum mass mounted at the end of the CubeSet adjacent to the deployable arrays. The exterior or radiating surface was covered in silver tef Teflon tape. Here we have some pictures of the hardware. Albus conducted environmental testing and system functional testing to meet specified requirements, and we followed the guidance for protoflight testing. Thermal vacuum testing was performed at our NASA Glenn's Vacuum Facility 10, and vibration was testing in our Structural Dynamics Laboratory facility. One of the major anomalies that we encountered was with the battery pack when we were functional testing. During the test, the CubeSat remained in an on state even with the switches engaged. The system was designed to be two fault tolerant with the foot switches and the remove before flight pin. The root cause for this was an internal MOSFET on the battery management system had failed on. Testing confirmed that the inhibits of the remove before flight pin as well as the foot switches were functional. Our corrective action was to add rigor to our charging procedure as well as use a better power supply with better control circuitry for battery charging to avoid transient voltage spikes. We also charged at a slower rate than the charge rate during the failure. Here we have pictures of the integration into the spacecraft provided by Rocket Lab. Members ha hand delivered our hardware to Rocket Lab USA, reviewed a checklist. Eventually the team had returned twice to charge the battery and fix a radio issue that was discovered later on. Here we have some pictures of the launch also provided by Rocket Lab. Alba successfully launched on Saturday, December 15th, 2018 at 11 p.m. from Mahia Peninsula, New Zealand on Rocket Lab's Electron. Here we have an overview of the flight operations. Albus deployed on Sunday, December 16th at 2.52 a.m. Walt picked up the signal hours later. The beacon was strong. This confirmed that the deployment had occurred. Had the deployment failed, a beacon would not have been heard. Unfortunately, that was the last time we had heard from Albus. The next pass occurred on Monday, December 17th. 2018. Attempts were made to find the beacon again. However, the government shutdown on December 26th ended our search. Eventually, we had called off the search in early February of 2019. Now I'll go through some of our top lessons learned. The first being it is important to start mechanical and electrical integration early in the design to make sure harness routing cutouts and important component placement is established as keep out zones. Two, building in an EDU or a 3D printing hardware to test is key and any new development to quickly uncover assembly issues and evaluate actual functional performance. 
Do not rely on an analysis alone. Three, keep as many aspects of your design as simple as possible. No matter how simple you think it is, it'll balloon in complexity just with the passage of time. Four, start writing your test plan as soon as possible. It is a living document. It will change as and grow as you learn. Share it with the rest of the team and get feedback. Share it with more experienced engineers and get advice. Five, once you have reviewed the test plan, do as many dry runs with the engineering unit as possible. It will pay off and give you confidence when it comes to time to test the flight unit. It will also be the best way to refine your test plan. Six, include testing scenarios when designing. The Albus design would not allow disabling the radio through the USB-C connector. Albus decided not to perform TVAC testing due to the risk of damaging the radio while in a small metal chamber. Seven, start analysis early. Use spreadsheet modeling to establish your design envelope for parameters that have the most influence on your design and performance. Use these calculations to establish what is reasonable for a certain concept or approach. Eight, do your best to define your potential environment. You can limit your options by having to over constraint your design to fly in every possible environment. At the same time, do not go too far in the other direction. And finally, nine, having the ability to disassemble the CubeSat in case anomalies arise important. Design with ease of integration, disassembly, and repair in mind. This was specifically important for Albus because of the battery anomaly I had talked about before. We had to completely disassemble the entire CubeSat in order to resolve the issue. Thank you.